This video is sponsored by Creative Live. This is the new Tamron 11 to 20 millimeter f 2.8 for Sony APS-C mirrorless. And it's a lens that I like so much that I have two of them, not because I bought them, but one is a loner and one is my own personal lens. So many of you have asked me to review this thing and I am very excited to finally be able to do that. The first thing that I wanna say is that we have needed this lens for a long, long time because if you wanted an ultra wide lens, there was really only one option and that was the Sony 10 to 18 F4. And if you know me, if you've watched this channel, you know how much I dislike that lens because in theory, it's a good lens, but the copies that I've received have been all over the place in terms of quality control and sharpness in the center and sharpness in the corners. It's basically a quality control nightmare. And that lens was released back in 2012, making it a whopping nine years old or so. This thing is brand new. That means for nine years, we've had no alternative as far as an ultra wide with autofocus designed specifically for Sony APS-C, which is crazy to think about. So in comes this Tamron 11 to 20 millimeter, and I'll be blunt, this is massively better than the Sony 10 to 18. It comes in a simple white box with some manuals, front and rear lens caps, and a lens hood. That is it. Its construction is similar to what we saw with the Tamron 17 to 70, plastics and glass, but it all feels nice. It doesn't feel as expensive expensive as some G lenses from Sony, but I've found Tamron's durability and longevity to be top notch. This is a light and compact lens. It's less than a pound, 334 grams to be exact. Starting at the rear, there is a metal lens mount, electronic connections for autofocus, and a nice rubber gasket all around the mount for weather sealing. In fact, there are seven gaskets in this lens that make it weather resistant, which is good because I think this makes for a great travel lens. In front of that there is some branding and a smooth but cheap feeling zoom ring which probably has to do with two things that I can see. Number one is the sound that it makes when you hit the end. It just reminds me of old kit lenses from Canon. It doesn't inspire. And the resistance, the actual amount of force that it takes to rotate this lens is very, very little. So it ends up feeling cheaper than I think it is. The Sony 16 to 55 has a much better feeling zoom ring as does Tamron's very own 17 to 70 f 2.8. Anyway, on this Tamron, this lens is smallest at 20 millimeters and extends out at 11 millimeters. The entire extension is about an inch or two centimeters or so. This Tamron 11 to 20 is designed in Japan and made in China, just like many of the other lenses I just mentioned. In front of the zoom ring is a compact focus ring that rotates freely and smoothly in both directions because it is electronic, not mechanically linked to anything. The front lens element is compact and convex. There is no writing or information on the front of the lens. It's nice and clean, which is good. Filter thread size is 67 millimeters, which is the same as the 17 to 70 f 2.8. Mounted on a camera, this lens looks great. The color matches well, and it's a good size for the body. It's lightweight, so very travel friendly. So if you haven't figured it out yet, Tamron is creating a zoom lens trifecta of sorts. They have this ultra wide 11 to 20 millimeter. They have the excellent 17 to 70 millimeter f 2.8 as well. That just came out in both of these for APS-C. And the next logical step in this lineup is to have a telephoto, something like a 70 to 203 millimeter or something crazy. So the question you probably have is how well does this 11 to 20 millimeter Tamron perform? Before I talk about that and get into some examples, let's talk about today's video sponsor, Creative Live. Creative Live is the place for your creative education. You can learn from Pulitzer Prize winners, cultural icons, and professionals, over 700 great teachers that will inspire, train, and support your passion. There are over 1,900 on-demand classes and over 60,000 lessons, so whether you are an aspiring photographer, videographer, video editor, or freelancer, you will find plenty of classes to learn from. I recently started taking a class called Lighting, Logistics, and Strategies 
for a life in photography taught by Joe McNally, who has been shooting for National Geographic since 1987. I'm learning a ton and focusing on how to better adapt for lighting in my own in-home studio. I have many more hours to go with that class, but I'm very excited to continue to learn and to adapt and to improve this channel as a result. And that's just one example of the over 1900 classes that are available with the Creator Pass. And new classes are added every single month. All of these are exclusive to Creative Live. And because they have sponsored this video, if you use the promo code Arthur10, so my name, A-R-T-H-U-R, the number 10, at checkout, you will get $10 off your Creator Pass. So definitely check that out in the description below. Special thank you to Creative Live for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the Tamron 11 to 20 and its performance. And this lens is sharp. Even wide open at f2.8, it is nice and detailed. The corners are great as well. I took a few sample photos in my living room to demonstrate, and here is what happened. At 11 millimeters and f2.8, you get a nice and clear image across the frame. The center is excellent, and the corners are also good. At f4, the corners do get better, but not by much because they were pretty sharp to begin with. At f8, which is what you would shoot for real estate photography, the corners are excellent. Here is the 11 to 20 millimeter versus my very own favorite Laowa 9 millimeter f2.8, both wide open, and I have to say, pretty close. I forgot how sharp the Laowa is wide open in the corners. Good results from both lenses. Obviously, the Laowa is noticeably wider at 9 millimeters. Here is the 11 to 20 millimeter Tamron versus a lens that I haven't reviewed yet, the Samyang. 12 millimeter f2 and you could see here that wide open the tamron is much sharper in the corners in the center it's about the same but the corners it has a big advantage stop down to f8 both lenses perform well even in the corners last up here is the tamron 11 to 20 millimeter versus the sigma 16 millimeter an all-time favorite both wide open at 16 millimeters and the Tamron is sharper at f2.8 than the Sigma is at f1.4. Now, if you stop the Sigma down, it's a different story. I found at f2.8 in the center, both the Tamron and the Sigma were very nicely sharp, as was the Samyang 12 millimeter and as was even my little Laowa 9 millimeter. For center sharpness, all of these lenses performed well. Back to the Tamron though, it's not only sharp, but the colors are excellent. Distortion control is also very good. Little vignetting, chromatic aberration is well controlled, focus breathing is almost a non-issue. The only thing that could use some work is flare control, which wasn't very good even with the little lens hood attached. The autofocus on this lens is impressively good, fast, silent, and accurate. This is a great lens for vlogging because it is nice and wide focuses quickly and it doesn't make any noises for your microphone to pick up. It's also a great lens for flying on a gimbal. The autofocus works amazing, grabs subjects and tracks subjects just like a native Sony lens does. In fact, all of my sample videos of my recent WeBuild 2 gimbal review were done with this Tamron 11-20mm. For real estate photography or videography, this lens is also stellar. It's easy to use, it's compact, and again, sharp corner to corner. So in summary, this lens is is amazingly good. In fact, both of the recent Tamron zoom lenses for Sony APS-C, this one and the 17 to 70, are excellent performers, and I would highly recommend both of them or either one of them. But that's not to say that there aren't some things that I want to talk about as far as negatives or shortcomings with the 11 to 20. The first thing is I wish it was wider. Now, for most situations, 11 millimeters is plenty wide enough. You're gonna get an impressive amount of subject into your frame. So for landscapes, ultra wide angle portraits, for vlogging, for interior work, you're gonna be just fine with this 11 to 20. But I do have to say that rooms do look bigger with my Laowa 9 millimeter. That's only a two millimeter difference, but on the ultra wide angle side, it makes a lot of difference. If Tamron had made this lens a 10 millimeter to 17 millimeter f2.8, that would have been perfect. I would have sold off my Laowa and I would never have missed the extra one millimeter of extra wideness. But at 11 millimeters, I'm kind of right at the cusp of where I could justify keeping this lens as well as my nine millimeter Laowa. So uh, it's not quite as wide as what I would want, but still a good lens nonetheless. Number two is I wish that this lens had 
vibration control or vibration compensation or image stabilization is the more common name for it. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense why Tamron excluded that from this lens because this 17 to 70, a great lens, has image stabilization built into it so they know how to do it. They can put it in any lens that they want, but it's just surprising that it wasn't included on this ultra wide angle. Now, I understand the argument that you don't really need image stabilization as much at ultra wide focal lengths because you don't really see camera shake as much. It's not as pronounced, but this is a lens that I think a lot of people who have cameras such as this one, the a6100 or the original a6000 or the a6400, which I have right here, would have benefited from having image stabilization, especially because I see this as an excellent vlogging camera setup. You can handhold it, it's lightweight, it's compact. It would have been ideal if it had image stabilization. The last thing that I'll mention is I wish it was cheaper. This thing at launch right now is $829. Now, I'm not saying it's too much money for the lens that it is, because I think that if anything, the Sony 10 to 18, which is an F4 lens and now again nine years old, is a complete ripoff. I wish that this Tamron 11 to 20 was priced at maybe 600, maybe 650, because I think a lot of people, especially if you have a cheaper camera body such as the A6100, it's a little bit harder to justify spending more than the price of your camera body on a lens, no matter how nice it is. That is going to be it for my review of this lens. I like it, I recommend it. Uh, I bought one for myself, I pre-ordered it months ago and waited for it and it finally showed up. So I'm very excited to throw this on my gimbal and it's gonna be a lens that I think I'm going to use a whole lot. If you are interested in picking up your own copy or reading more specs, as usual, I'll put some links down in the description below, so please feel free to use those. Beyond that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something Thing from it. As usual, post down in the comments if you guys like this lens, what your thoughts are, what you think of its performance. Also, if you want me to do a more in-depth comparison between this lens and the other ones that I have, maybe I'll even buy another Sony 10-18 to if enough people ask for that side-by-side -side comparison. As much as I hate going out and buying another Sony 10-18 to millimeter, I will do it for you guys. Um, thanks for all of your likes, all of your comments, and your support. My next video is going to be on this Tamron 12mm. Pretty cool little lens, so stay tuned for that. That's it for me. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.